how to particularly run a shoe, and they wear it day in, day out, and they're very loyal to that shoe, and they'll go, you know, I used to go, when I would buy a certain kind of shoe, I used to go buy three, three at the same time, because they would wear out after 300 miles, and I was afraid that they'd change the shoe, and so, you know, I would buy three or four of them, because, good God forbid that they should, like, tinker with the stiffness of the medial part of the sole, and my God, I'd have plantar fasciitis again, which is what I've spent all my life worrying about getting, because I used to get plantar fasciitis. So, a few tips. So, following up on what Irene said, the principle of running, if you want to avoid injuries, two things. The first is, you want to avoid rapid in in impacts. So when you get loading, there's two parameters that really matter. One is the rate at which you load, and the other is the magnitude of the load. So if you have a very, very small load, and, um, but it's rising very rapidly, if it's only a small load, that's probably not going to injure you. But if it's a big load, it's a big force, and it rises really rapidly, connective tissue can't handle it. Bone can't handle it, ligament can't handle it, tendon can't handle it. And the reason for that, actually the chalkboard here, is a phenomenon called hysteresis. Right? Hysteresis is when you have a stress, a strain, which is deformation, and stress. And when you load the tissue, there's a particular curve. And when you unload it, it goes like that. And the area in between those two curves is lost energy. If you strain something much faster, the curve, I don't know if they colored chalk, oh well, the curve goes like this. You get much more hysteresis for a faster loading rate. Now that energy that's lost can go into three forms. Right? We've all had high school physics, right? I hope. It's going to go to light. Now, how many of you glow when you run? <laughs> <laughs> it can go to, to heat, friction, right? A fair amount of it. Or it can go to breaking chemical bonds, movement. Though that's the one thing you don't want. You don't want chemical bonds to break in your bone and your tendon and your ligament. That's called tissue damage. And you keep doing that over and over and over again. You run a million, you run 20 miles a week for a year. You've got more than a million impacts on each foot every year. You know, one of those injuries, is one of those landings is not going to do anything, but you do it a billion times, you're going to start building up slowly, 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 and eventually you're going to get a repetitive stress injury. It's often called an overuse injury. So you want to avoid rapid impact. So again, you've seen this curve before. That's the heel striker with that rapid rate of loading. That's called pain. You don't have to do that. That's the forefoot strike. That's obviously less injurious. Irene also showed you about torque. She showed you about that moment that occurs on the inversion, right? Well, every single joint has three degrees of freedom. There's, 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 there's moments that occur in, in this plane, in this plane, and in this plane, around your ankle, around your knee, and around your hip. And the faster that moment is, the more injury you're going to do to your ligaments, your tendons, everything, and your, your, your cartilage, whatever it is that's holding that joint together. So we want to avoid moments that are also rapid and high. And she showed you that, that quarter runner who went back and forth between forward strike and grip and strike. So, over the years, running coaches have been teaching and, and advising on basic elements of form, and, and there's, there's disagreement, of course, um, but if you look at the sum total of, of, of 100 years worth of advice, right, from many, many, many different manuals, from, from coaches, some of you may have heard of Percy Cerruti, and Arthur Lydiard, and um, Fred Wilt, and um, um, uh, the, the, the list goes on, right? And then some of you may have heard of pose running and chi running and evolution running. All of these coaches and these running methods more or less agree on the same few basic elements of form. I'll try to explain why they work. Now, the first one is don't land hard on your heel. You've already learned this, I think, from my read more than you probably ever wanted to know. But, um, you know, so if you don't want to land hard on your heel, consider a forefoot or a midfoot strike. But if you're doing it, the analogy that Irene used, and I think it's a good one, is like a plane landing, right? When you come in for a landing, you don't want to come at a high angle. You always want to come at a very low, gentle angle, right? So this is a, a four-foot striker who's running well, right? Nice, low angle, fairly, I mean, actually slightly high compared to some of the really best barefoot runners, right? This is viewed from the medial side. This is a view from the lateral side. This is a, a diagram I just pulled off the internet about this is supposed to be good form, right? If you run like that, you're going to be in pain. This is really bad. This is, this is going to put huge moments around your ankle. You're going to wish you hadn't tried forefoot striking, okay? Not on. Don't do this, okay? You want to land very gently, not like that. 
So here's an example. Of, you, I already showed you Chris McDougall. Here's another example of Chris McDougall running across the force plate here, I think from your lab. I uh, stole this from, from you. I did this again just to show you. This is a good barefoot runner. Like, see how just gently, how, what a low angle his foot comes in as he comes across the floor. Right? He's not landing at a high angle, he's landing at a low angle. You, uh, and that's because when you land at a very high angle, you basically have much higher moments, much higher forces that you have to uh, exert around your ankle. Um, it's not, not a good idea. So that's rule number one. These, these are all integrated. Rule number two is don't overstride. People often talk about overstriding, but people know, have no idea what overstriding is. Well, this guy's overstriding. He looks cool. He thinks he's you know, <laughs> macho. He's got his rippling muscles, etc. He feels he's running in good form. He is not running in good form. He is, he's, he's, look how well his foot is. It's way out in front of the center of gravity. Um, that, is, that is causing one massive heel strike. Now, unfortunately, he's running on a beach. So he's got lots of cushioning down there, so he might get away with it for a little bit. But if you were to do that barefoot, it would not be pleasant, right? Um, so that's an overstride. Almost every running coach on the planet agrees that you shouldn't overstride. And I just grabbed this from that Taramara running. I'm sorry, the video's a little bit slow, so you can't really quite see. But he's just at the moment of landing here. And you can see that he's landing, more or less, with his foot underneath his center of mass. When you do that, you decrease the moments that are acting around your legs, around your, around your joints. You decrease, um, you align the forces, you align the joints, and also it prevents you from, from having a very stiff leg. So this, is a, this, this, this gives you much more compliance because he, see how his knee is straight and his ankle is straight? He's got a completely stiff ankle when he lands. That's, that's a stiff ankle, that's no compliance in his ankle. And he's got no compliance in his knee. He's landing with a stiff knee. So what's his effective mass going to be? It's going to be something like 10% of his body mass. He's basically, his entire leg is going to the ground, right? And I'll give you a quick demonstration of the treadmill. You'll hear it yourself, okay? This, his leg is now compliant. His ankle is going to come down when he hits the ground. His knee is going to flex. His hip is going to flex. He's going to land in a much more gentle way. That's what we talk about not overstriding. So when you run, think about yourself being in alignment. Uh, it's almost as a line from your ear to your hip to your foot, wherever it's landing. If that's a line, that's a good sign, right? Of course, you can't do that yourself, can you? Video yourself. You can have somebody video you or come in the lab or whatever. Just think about what you're doing. Oh, here's a nice little con contrast between Scott Jurek, who by the way will be here this spring, um, and, uh, and, and the famous Taramara of uh, runner. Uh, this is um, uh, Anyway, notice how he's landed in a very different way than Jurek. He's got this big, huge Brooks shoe on. I'm using myself as a bad example. Um, it was a cold, horrible day in the Boston Globe wanted to take a picture of me running. And I often have this problem when I run, is I, I tend to lean forward with a bad posture, right? I lean forward a bit too much in my head. So if you're barefoot running, there's good barefoot and bad barefoot, we call it in my lab. This is an example, actually, of me doing bad barefoot running, because I don't know why, but anyway, I haven't warmed up this little bit forward, but anyway. But notice how I'm leaning forward. Yeah, that's bad. I'm going to lean forward at the hip. Now my center of gravity is in front of me. I'm falling over. What am I going to have to do to prevent myself from falling over? I have to put my leg out further, right? Mm -hmm. That means I'm no longer landing alignment. I'm going to have a stiffer leg. Yeah, so if you become a barefoot runner, you have really stiff Achilles, and you have, um, you know, you're getting really big calf problems. Part of that probably because you're leaning far too far forward, and you're, um, not, you know, you still can land on a forefoot strike, but you're not landing with a good forefoot strike as this perfect runner over here. High cadence. It turns out that all the world's best runners, you look at, at people who are winning gold records in the marathon, to people who are track stars at the Harvard track team or Penn State or whatever, most of them, it turns out, seem to run at 180 cadence. That's 180 cadence. Um, people think that it shortens your stride length. Um, it's actually not true. It shortens your step length. What it means is you spend more time in the air and less time with your feet on the ground. And it turns out that running is priced by the step. And I can explain why later on. So it turns out the guys who win marathons are actually running at the same cadence when they're at marathon speed, at race speed, or when they're just kind of tooling around Central Park just warming up. They're not paying a price for it. They're, and what's, what it's doing is it's, it's, forcing, it's keeping them from overstriding. It's making them use their muscles more efficiently. It works, I promise you. And if you don't believe me, um, just 
I mean, I had to, one of my, my advisees have, has been having some writing problems. I actually brought her to the lab, and um, she, went, she had 150 cadence, which is typical of a lot of joggers today. People run too slowly. You just watch them. They're, they're, they have a slow cadence, and they stick their feet out, and bam, they're crashing into the ground. If, and a great way to force yourself not to overstride is to buy one of these little metronomes. 20 bucks on Amazon.com. You can annoy everybody. <laughs> Craig Rogers over there can tell you that I, I've been carrying this in my pocket and when I see runners on the Harvard on the Move runs who are running with too slow a cadence, I stick this on there. <laughs> <laughs> and we get them up to a good cadence and it does improve their, improve their gait. They, they, they start smiling. And finally, so those are really the four major elements of form, really. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, landing a lot. Don't land on your heel hard, or if you do land in a shoe, make sure you're not landing. Don't overstride. Uh, uh, run with a good cadence. Don't lean too far forward. Uh, and there are other tips as well. One of them is, is don't wear an iPod when you're learning form. Uh, listen to your feet when you hit the ground. Good runners, regardless of who they are, run quietly. Uh, I, I can tell you, if you're making a lot of sound when you're hitting the ground, that sound is a proxy for collision. So you should be nice and quiet. Answer that in a second. So, so listen to the sound. Don't wear an iPod. Think about your form. Um, you, by the way, if you do want to wear an iPod, you can now download music that's at 180. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I just saw somebody, uh, Colin Petty, who wrote Marathon Sports, just sent me a link to this. That, that Merrill, which is one of the companies that's producing a, a minimal shoe, they're actually sponsoring some free iTunes um, downloads. So if you want, go on to Merrill. Uh, website. You can download. I don't know. I don't know what the music is. It might be horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But it's nice zippy, 180 beat per minute. <coughs> Finally, it's important to relax, right? This woman was clearly posing for the cameras. Here she's overstriding. I mean, this is just dreadful form. Um, but you can just see she's all tensed up in her shoulders. She's clenching her fists. Not good. You want to relax. You, all those muscles that I Irene mean, mentioned, the nuchal ligament, all that. For them all to work, their, your body's loaded with passive stabilization systems. As soon as you start clenching up, you defeat those systems. They no longer act. So relaxing enables your head to stay still without bouncing too much. It means your muscles don't have to work as hard. Um, and, um, um, and finally, um, I'm a big believer in stretching, particularly when you get to be my age. Um, when I was in my 20s and 30s, yeah, I could not stretch, and I didn't stretch. Now I've learned that if I don't stretch, I pay the price. But, uh, that maybe because my tendons are mineralizing and whatever. <laughs> and the most important thing, of course, is to have fun. And Alexios forgot to mention this, but do join us. We're meeting on Sundays at 10 o'clock in the Holyoke Center Arcade. You can run one mile, you can run three miles, you can run 10 miles, you can run 20 miles if you're training for Boston. You can do whatever you want. Also, Wednesdays at 12 in the Holyoke Center Arcade. And we've got lots of resources on my website. So before going further, just want to see if this works. I just want to give you a, an oral demonstration of what's going on here. And you can change the form here. So, a, a treadmill is actually a great place to learn good form because you can, it's actually a great big sounding board. So, so you see, you're running. I'm going to now switch to the field strike. That's the field strike.